the city that Nimrod built was Babylon. Now the name Babylon occurs in the Bible around 354 times, mostly in the Old Testament, and is in fact second in importance only to Jerusalem throughout Scripture. Biblically, it is always viewed as the devil's city, while Jerusalem is viewed as God's city. They are regularly contrasted with one another and seen in opposition to one another, so we need to understand more about it. By all accounts, Nimrod's Babylon was the first great city of the world, which in turn was the capital of the first great empire of the world. In fact, we have reason to believe that Babylon was the greatest empire of all time. The Babylonian Empire had two eras of prominence, but they both come in times covered by the Old Testament. Its first era of prominence was under the kingship of Nimrod himself, and then later it again came to the fore under the kingship of a man called Nebuchadnezzar. In 539 BC, the Babylonian Empire was attacked and captured by the Persian king Cyrus the Great. This ended Babylon's status as the most powerful kingdom on earth, and although there is evidence that the city remained an important cultural centre, and evidence that there were several rebellions by Babylonians against the new Persian Empire, hoping to re-establish Babylon's superiority, it was never resurrected. The physical empire of Babylon disappeared long ago. This is why when we get to the New Testament, which records events around 500 years after Babylon's demise, there is hardly any mention of it at all. Out of the 354 mentions of Babylon in the Bible, 342 come in the Old Testament. By the time of the New Testament, it had been long gone. Indeed, on the few occasions when it is mentioned, it is often just in reference to Old Testament events, except for one notable occasion where Peter uses it as a code word for Rome. This is because by the time of Jesus and the Apostles, the Roman Empire was the new dominant power on the world stage and the Babylon of its day. The curious part of the whole thing, however, comes in Revelation, which prophesies the events that will occur at the end of time. God reveals the future to the writer, John, through a series of visions, and in Revelation 14, 16, 17 and 18, we find frequent references to Babylon. Given that Babylon had been long gone even by the time Revelation was written, it's intriguing to find God referring to it in the future tense. For example, in Revelation 18.21 we read, Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea, and said, With such violence the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. Will be thrown down. Future tense. Revelation 17.5 perhaps has the most famous reference to Babylon. It says, This title was written on her forehead, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. God's wrath and fury at Babylon is palpable in these passages. He is ready to crush it with such terminal violence that it will never again see the light of day or have any bearing on the world again. He calls it the source of the abominations of the earth. The language being used to describe it just couldn't be any stronger. In Revelation 16.19 we read, God remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Fury, wrath, violence. These are the words that describe a God filled with a terrifying and righteous anger. God utterly despises Babylon. But again, wasn't Babylon conquered over 500 years before Christ was even born? Revelation clearly and intriguingly shows that there is an element of Babylon that has survived until today and will survive until the end of time, something which is still influencing people, causing abominations, spiritual prostitution and adultery. In Revelation 14.8 we read, A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. In Revelation 18.2 we read, with a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit, a haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. Babylon will fall, but it has not yet fallen. You see, Babylon is more than just an ancient city. As the Bible so clearly outlines, it is the source or fountainhead of evil that began thousands of years ago and is flowing throughout the history of mankind, affecting us even today in ways we don't realise.
It represents a satanic system of rebellion against God's plan of salvation that has never ceased to exist in one form or another. The practices, symbolism and perverted thought processes that originated there are still with us today. It has adopted various guises over time, but the common threads are there to be uncovered. It is the source of all abominations of the earth. This study is largely about following those threads from Genesis to Revelation and covering everything in between so that people might learn to recognize them, avoid deception and be stirred into action against their spiritual enemy.